Hello, Taurus. This is the general reading for the sign of Taurus. Anyone who has Taurus strongly in their charts could resonate with this with this reading. Um, Taurus, as I'm getting into your energy, entering into this scenario, this consciousness of this group of Taurus people. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get going here um, for the sign of Taurus. What is the current energy for the sign of Taurus? What is the current energy for the sign of Taurus, please? What is the current energy for the sign of Taurus? What is the current energy for the sign of Taurus? These three cards, how did they come out like this? What is the current energy? Boy. What is the current energy for the sign of Taurus? What is the current energy for the sign of Taurus? What will Taurus be stepping into in the incoming future? In the incoming future, what will Taurus be stepping into? Ooh, it's just it's just so much energy today. Um, sorry, to, I had to take a little bit of a break. I, I sometimes have to do that because I can get caught up in a whirlwind. Be stepping into what energy will Taurus be stepping into in the next immediate future? The next immediate future for the sign of Taurus. The next immediate future for the sign of Taurus. Guidance for Taurus, please. Guidance for Taurus. Guidance for Taurus, please. Guidance for Taurus. Guidance for Taurus. Right. There's a lot shifting here. It's the shifting, um, especially when you're such a strong earth sign, it's the shifting of the energies that can really kind of get that whirlwind feeling um, to show up in your experience. So let's go ahead and look at what these energies are. I don't know what they are either, so let's see what's here. Nine of Wands, Queen of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Ten of Wands, and a clockwise rotation upwards. All right, so let me get into this. Give me one moment here. These cards are, I use them quite a lot and they're sort of bent. So they sometimes reflect the light off. Oh, man. The top of my head is cold, which means that there is something very relevant happening. Is just a little bit more information out of this Nine of Wands energy. Tell me more about this Nine of Wands. It could be a situation here, a person here, Taurus. There could be a person or a situation here. that you are not sure about. You're not sure if it's yours. It's You're not sure if it's here. You're not sure if this is the one or if this is, if this feeling that you have is real, you're just not sure. You're not opening up the floodgates of your life's 
warmth or from of your life's coffer. I mean, you're not opening up the doors really yet. You could be resisting this or just needing more time. I think needing more time is okay. The nine of wands energy is a okay energy. It's not a bad energy to be in the nine of wands because this is the energy of someone who has lived through experiences and has been burned, has been um, scarred. This is somebody who has been through plenty of battles. And I think it's okay to take your time to really look at the situation, but we can't deny the fact that we have two aces of pentacles here, two, two, and we only have seven energies, okay, out of a possible, what, 78 plus 78. I'm not going to do math right now because I'm not using a math mind right now. 150? I don't know. I'm not using my math mind. I can't go there. It's a different kind of skill. My son, I do have a math mind. I was a financial advisor for many years, and so my brain sort of wants to go teetering off in that direction, but I'm pulling it back because i that's not this energy. But there's two aces of pentacles here, two times. Now we know that there's eight aces, or there's four aces in each deck, and I'm using two different decks. That means that there's eight different aces, and we have two aces of the same kind. So it tells me that there is a confirmation here that there's a new life. There's a new reality. If you're questioning it, if you're feeling like it's too good to be true, um, th this is a confirmation for you that there is a new reality here for yourself. We do have the Empress here with a King of Wands. So there could be a King of Wands here. There could be an Empress here. But I think this is the energy of creation. This is the energy of stepping out of your comfort zone because a King of Wands can do that. It's a masculine energy of passion, of creativity, of invention. And you have stepped past a comfort zone for yourself, Taurus, in the balance of who you are with the energy of Gaia, connecting into the source energy from above, connecting into the grounding earth energy of below. It's the energy of creativity, an energy of love and nurturing. I'm getting into the Empress and my breath is changing. I can feel the Empress here. This is your energy that I'm in. It's an energy of passion, of wonder, of hard work, implementation, stepping out of the safe zone into some sort of flux, flex energy. This you do in the King of Wands energy. You step out into a new frontier and you create a new path. You start a new business. You start a new job. Ooh, it's exciting too. I can feel the energy adjust as I step into the King of Wands energy. So you've been taking action now. You've been taking action. You've been making changes in your life. You've been creating or stepping into new paths. You could have some role as an influencer, some kind of role as a presenter or a performer. But you really do use the energy that comes from your core, from your abdomen, from your womb and your solar plexus and your base chakras. This is something that propels you forward from the abdomen. It's passion. It's chemistry. It's it's some sort of Un, uh, it's a, it's something you can't stop. It's like, it's, it's something that calls deep within you. It's not something from the brain. It does have, um, a connection with the brain, but it, it is a heart movement. It comes from the chest cavity. It comes from the center of the body, the core, and it's not anything that you can really stop. This work that you've been doing, the actions you've been taking, the changes that you've been making in your life are bringing in a brand new reality, some kind of improvement. The Ace of Pentacles is a new beginning in finances, a new improvement in your financial picture, new improvement in your stability, stability and in your comfort, 
new improvement to the sanctuary space within your life. Could be a new relationship, could be a new job, a new business, a new hobby, a new home, new promotion, a new, um, could have received a bonus because of some work that you've done. But you're sort of in a, in a position of waiting to see if it's going to last. Waiting to see if this is going to last. <laughs> That's okay. You can be in that energy. I don't see that it's stopping you. Because look, you get to the Ten of Wands. I just saw that now. Did you see that? You guys probably saw that. You guys are probably going to be like, oh, when is she going to get It's right here. The answer is right here. <laughs> Sorry, I go from card to card. It's usually how I move in the lateral kind of a space here. <sighs> yeah, you're going to be able to put these burdens down. See how this is rotating clockwise, right? You're, you're coming out of a space where you no longer can carry the weight of all of these jobs, all of these duties, all of these expectations, whether you have accumulated them yourself with your willingness to help, your motivation to bring a betterment into society, your um, enthusiasm to um, help, whatever this is. It could be someone who is very um, at the end of some sort of a role. So you step into a role in the beginning and you're excited about the role and there's a lot for you to learn and you have um, a great capacity for growth and you're excited and you go through the years, whether it's the months or the years, whatever this time is, however it goes for you, but you go through the processes of learning all of the steps, learning everything that's to be learned. And by the time you get to the end of this journey, you're tired, you're bored, you have no more interest in doing it. You can do it in your sleep and you start to allow some details to kind of go astray because of your disinterest now. You're no longer motivated. You're no longer inspired. Yeah, for some of you, it's this. You're no longer at the top of your game. And now it feels like a burden, a weight that you're carrying. So as this new beginning comes in for you, or as you step into it, or as you bring it to fruition, you're going to begin to allow these duties, these responsibilities, these burdens, the weight of the world to fall off your shoulders as this continues to revolve around, right? As this continues to move here, see how the wands are going to fall out of your arms. <laughs> so I do believe the new beginning is going to start first and then the wands will begin to fall. That's what it's kind of showing. So the new beginning happens first, or you see it coming, or you get notified of it, or someone new comes in, whatever this is, it's happening for real. It's not an idea. It's not new, new passion or anything. It's something that's happening for real. Sure, it can be passionate. Sure, it can be about love, but it's something that's happening for real. It's not just the words taking place or the ideas happening in the mind. It's something that's happening for real. The Ace of Pentacles is my favorite ace because it's in reality. We all have had plenty of Aces of Cups, haven't we? Where our heart is bursted out of ourselves. We're so filled with love. Or we've had plenty of Aces of Wands where we're so passionate about something and we're doing something new and we're excited about it and we're telling everyone about it. We're just driven. We can't sleep. But the Ace of Pentacles is something that's happening for real. Right over the top of the Queen of Cups. It's happening because you have taken the time to look deep within yourself, to look the wounds in the eye, to look the deep hurt in the eye, to see the truth of it, to see the harm that it's done to yourself and to others, and to allow it to float away down the stream. As you forgive yourself and you forgive others, and as you allow yourself to step into a new life, we begin to see these wands that you hold beginning to slip away as you sense that this new reality is here. This path is here for you to step on. 
It is like this. It is thus for this group. I am sure of it because of this confirmation that we've received. All right, let's look now at what's happening in the future. Let's look at what's happening in the future. Page of Cups. Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Page of Swords. My heater is coming on and off. So you will hear that sound. And we, we know that things just don't happen overnight. So this is you stepping into the next immediate energy in the next couple of weeks here and how you feel about this situation. So you're inspired by this. There is some new introduction or some thing here that has warmed your heart, that's inspired you here. Let me, let me go deeper. I want to get help here. I need some help on the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Please help me with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, please. Please help me with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Please help me with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Two of Cups. Please help me with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Please. It's a very unsure kind of energy. And the card flipped. I'm not going to put it on the table, but I want to see what Seven of Cups. It's a feeling of not being sure. There is an action choice here that you'll need to make in the future. There's an action choice. But it looks like you're spending some time here looking at this situation. You have a new partnership coming in. A new partnership here. It could be a new job, a new employer, a new lover, a new path. But there's another person here because it's a two of cups. There's another part and there's a partnership blooming or looming. <laughs> it feels kind of like looming. See the energy difference in blooming and looming. That's a nine of pentacles next to the page of swords. <laughs> So you've been working here on manifesting, on building something new. You've been working on it. And you've been working on it energetically. You might not have been telling anyone. This could have been a secret here. The high priestess is able to really keep things within her. She has a very deep sense of connection with source energy. She communicates with her oversoul. She communicates with her inner being. She communicates with the divine. And um, some of these elements that are here for her are, you know, to, in her perspective, um, she's, <sighs> for right now, I think that she's kind of keeping this a little bit of a secret as she works to bring this together. She's studying this. She's investigating it. She's watching it closely. Um, there is a decision, though, that comes fairly quickly. It, it, it comes fairly quickly in. Could have to do with this emperor energy here, Aries energy. Um, 
could be Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo energy as it, how it comes in. It could come in very passionately, um, very quickly. It could really, this high priestess, it's coming in quickly. And in the past, the high priestess has learned that some sometimes things that come in quickly leave quickly. Sometimes that's what she's learned. It's more about the Knight of Wands. Chariot. Yeah, coming in quickly here. Very balanced, though. This is Cancer energy. It's coming in quickly and powerfully. Could be an emperor here. Could be a new boss. Sorry, I see the camera's moving. Hold on a second. Let me back up just a little bit. Could be a new boss. New employment situation. New lover. New introduction of someone. It's coming in quickly. It's something new. Now we have two pages of cups. Something new here coming, but it, it inspires you. It warms your heart. Here's a page of cups over the top of the ten of cups. This could really be it for you. This could be your new path or your new person or a new child or something here that fills you with this warm, blissful energy. Does it have to be a sexual partner? Like not everything is about sex. Not everything is about intimate love. I understand that. But bliss can be found in many different areas in life. Bliss can be found with the work we do. It can be found within ourselves. It can be found in our life path. It can be found with our family, with our community, with our people, with our nation, with our bloodline, with animals. It can be found in so many different ways. But there's a, there's a warm of, warmth of heart here, a new warmth of heart and bliss that is being connected into. But fairly quickly here, there is a action choice that you will be required to make regarding the emperor energy. Now, I feel like this emperor is probably the partner here. This could be a boss. This could be a new lover. This could be a family member, somebody who's in control, a father situation, a father, an uncle, somebody. Um, if there's a hierarchy in your life, this person is often in, in a hierarchy that's a little bit higher than yours. This person doesn't have to be higher than you in the hierarchy, but this person is very specialized in what they do. The emperor is like very much disciplined, very much in control, very focused on efficiency, knowing the plan, having the process in place, having the, dis the discipline to carry, um, to carry through on something, the willpower to stay with it, the strength to, to stay with something. This could be a business owner could be an employer, could be um, someone who's just a master of their craft here. There is an action choice here connected here. This action choice is connected with this page of cups, this new warmth feeling that you feel in your heart is connected to this partner, right? It's connected to something that you've been doing here and it's definitely connected to this emperor energy. And this suspicion or this cynical energy or this needing to investigate energy is connected to the speed at which it comes in, the passion at which it comes in. It's coming in very strongly. Um, and it, it kind of comes in so strongly that you're not sure of your intuition. You're not sure of how you feel. You're not sure of which way your heart wants to go. That's why the page of swords is here. I'll dig deeper into these energies in the extended reading. But I always like to finish off the reading feeling um, the end of a chapter. You know, I don't want to like, I don't like the, yeah, the moon. <sighs> Just not knowing. But the answers are not going to be given in the tarot that I do. Because the team that I work with do not give us the answer books. Right? We must learn. We must grow. We must get in tune with ourselves. We must um, connect with the divine. We must connect with our guidance. We must learn how to make decisions that are helpful for us and that bring us to um, healthy life choices. If we don't learn, we continue to go through the same cycle over and over again. So they're not going to give us the answer, but they are going to help guide, guide forward. There is an action choice coming in. Let's look at the um, guidance that comes in. 
Let's look at the guidance here. I know the light's shining on that. The card is bent and I want. There is a change taking place now. As this rotates in a clockwise direction, you're going to see a change taking place in how you feel about your life, about your money about your connectedness to your community, your connectedness to a loved one, how you feel about life, how you feel about your safety and your security. So there's a great change coming in. And I think there's a certain sense of fear with this. You know, I'm re being reminded, okay, they just showed me this energy. I, let me find it here just really quickly. I need to find this Two of Swords. I need to find this Two of Swords. So those of you who watch my readings know which Two of Swords I'm going to pull. <laughs> you guys know it. Let me find it. <sighs> Sorry. They probably have it close up here too. Hold on a second. I have to find it. I'll be fast. There we go. You know, when there is a great storm happening in our lives, when there's a great storm happening in our lives, sometimes we like to huddle inside right? We like to huddle inside. We lock the doors, close the curtains. We run some water in case electricity goes off. Those of us who have electricity, sometimes people in the world yet still to this day don't have electricity. Um, but we, but we prepare for the aftermath of some kind of storm. And while the storm takes place, sometimes we can hear knockings on the door. Sometimes we can hear poundings on the walls from the branches hitting the walls or debris hitting the roof. And for this lady, um, there was during this storm, um, a knocking on the door. And as she sat huddled in her recliner in a cozy corner that she's found where she felt safe, she hesitated to see what the knocking was. She hesitated. She preferred to stay where she was because it felt safe, even though it was uncomfortable still, but she knew that the structure could not withstand a tornado or a hurricane, or if there was a vast amount of flooding, the water would rise up in her house or in her structure. She felt safe in that corner, even though she ultimately knew that she wasn't safe, right? But there was a knock that kept on knocking on her brain. What was that knock? I wonder what that knock was wonder what that was. And so finally, during a moment of quick passion, she had the strength to crawl out from under her blankets, put her cup of tea down and go to the door. And she opened the door and the door flung open because the wind caught it, right? And there on the doorstep was this baby. And that's what this Two of Swords reminds me of. It's having the strength, but it's not really the strength because it does take strength to take the blindfold off and put the swords down. But it's that moment of passion, that inner strength that somehow you get that strength in that moment that you feel like I'm going to take the blindfold off. So it's a divine connection or it's a passion that spurts through you somehow that gives you right in that moment, right in that moment, that bugle calls that you have the strength to take the blindfold off 
and put the swords down and step forward through this doorway to see what's on the other side. That's the guidance coming forward. Because what's here is a new beautiful opportunity filled with love, filled with healing, could be shy, it could be a little bit hesitant, but it runs deep and it's and it's brought forward to you from the universe or you connected in with it somehow in an energy of love, in an energy of self-love, self-awareness, self-fulfillment, love for others. Could be a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. Could be anyone. Um, could be any kind of situation here. But this is a situation that's generous, that's kind, that means well. Could be slightly shy or slow in coming. But it is about love, love for yourself, love for others, love for humanity. And it does kind of take your breath away when I get into that energy. Like this lady's breath is kind of taken away as that door flings open. And she sees what's on her doorstep. <sighs> it's that kind of a feeling that I get into. And that's the guidance that comes here. When the time is right. When you feel that energy sweeping through you, that passion sweeping through you, you will know when it's time to take off the blindfold and put the swords down and open the door to see what's coming towards you. You will know when you feel that sound, that bugle call, that energy spurting through you, you will have the, you will have the, the, the strength. So don't push it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait till you have that energy to do it. And it will all start to take place. Okay, um, I am going to take a little rest and then I'll move into the extended. And when I'm in the extended, I'll dig deeper into some of these energies. I'm definitely going to dig into the Ace of Pentacles. And just right there, did you hear my breath? It just... I'm going to dig um, deeper into the energy here of this page of swords to see what more there is to be found out. I'm going to dig deeper into the emperor energy and into the ten of cups. So these are the energies I'm going to dig deeper in in the extended. And then I'll look at the people who are around you and what their intentions are. All right, so that's the goal for the extended reading. So with that, I'm going to take a short break. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here, for listening to through my analogies. <laughs> that sometimes it's the only way to really speak it out in a way that makes sense. I want to thank you for being with me. And I want to thank you um, for giving me this opportunity just to get into the energy of your story. And I wish you all the very, very best, very, very best journeys this new year, my friends. Thank you. <laughs>